Good afternoon, good evening, and good morning, everyone everywhere, depending on where and when you are joining. It is a bright, sunshiny resurrection Passover Ramadan Sunday outside my door. What's it looking like outside of your door? Now, last week, <clears throat> we talked about secondhand merchandise. It was an exciting topic. If you didn't see it, I'm telling you, go look for it mm -hmm. on Facebook. And that led to this week's topic. So this is going to be part two, not part two secondhand merchandise, but part two. The topic is hoarding. Hoarding ranges from mild to severe. In some cases, <laughs> hoarding may not impact your life at all, but in some cases, it can be downright crippling. And it's described as a disorder. I am your co-host, Ambassador Lisa Parks, and welcome to Africa Online TV. Now, if you're tuning in on Facebook and you want to join the conversation, come on over to Zoom. The ID number is 514-199-854. That's 514-199-854. And now for the editorial of the day, my co-host, Niasa. Happy Easter. Good day. Greetings to everyone. Good evening, good night, depending on where you are on planet Earth. It is, as you just heard, Easter, Ramadan, uh, what is it again? So Passover. Please, uh, Passover. Yes, Passover. Now we're going through all that as we progress. Greetings again. Today, April 17th, 2022, is the 107th day of the year on the Gregorian calendar. That leaves us with 258 days till the end of this 2022. It is the 16th Sunday of the year on the 17th week of 2022. It is also the 19th day of spring, leaving us, as I always say, I mean, Ambassador Lisa, with 65 days before summer. So it may be hot out there now, but summer is still to come. On this April 17th, Christians have been observing Easter. It is the third day of Passover, a Jewish observance, and the 16th day of Ramadan, a Muslim observance. If you usually try your hand at writing, remember that today is International Haiku Poetry Day. Mm. A haiku is an ancient form of Japanese poetry that consists of three lines with the syllable structure, five, seven, five. Japanese haikus also count sounds, not only syllables. Haikus typically revolve around nature, the passing of seasons, or ephemeral beauty. They are also concise due to their short length. Try one. Haiku day is here. April breeze, warm and gentle, joyful holiday. Neither our editorial reflection nor the discussion per se would be in haiku form. So let's go. The topic, as you heard Ambassador Lisa say, is hoarding. Hoarding? Have you ever come across that word? Do you know what it means and what it is all about? After financial literacy and uh, secondhand merchandise, Africa Online Media Corporation invites you today to look at something many of us may be doing a bit unconsciously. Join our discussion to share your thoughts about hoarding. Is hoarding a way of life? Is hoarding a fun activity? Or is hoarding a psychological problem? That free encyclopedia Wikipedia tells us that, quote, hoarding is a behavior where people or animals accumulate food or other items. It is a situation or condition where the particular or where the practitioner rather resorts to the general gathering and storing of goods. If not checked on a timely manner, hoarding becomes not just an obsession, but a psychological problem requiring with time medical attention. It becomes imperative therefore to understand which of our actions is leading in the direction of hoarding? Is it just an attempt to preserve something we cherish so much, something we consider so precious? 
or is it a desire to keep something we think is very important and will be necessary or available down the line? Hoarding may be necessary at one point in time because of circumstances, for example, civil unrest or threat of natural disaster may lead people to hoard foodstuffs, water, gasoline, and other essentials that may be that they believe will be necessary when the time comes or will be in short supply when they need them. Be that as it may, the disadvantages of hoarding are very telling. Hoarding causes clutter, clutter which becomes both a health and a fire hazard. Either way, hoarding becomes an, incon an inconvenience to other people around the house, especially because you, the hoarder, do not see it as occupying space, but the space becomes taken up by that stuff that you are keeping around. The Institute for Challenging Disorganization has become so concerned about hoarding that it has created five point, a five-point scale ranking the severity of the practice. The scale ranges from mild, as Ambassador Lisa said, to severe, from a situation with some space availability to an extreme situation involving extreme clutter and seriously sanitary or seriously unsanitary conditions. We certainly would not welcome any of these situations, which explains the need to unclutter and distance ourselves from hoarding. We need to dispose of that which we no longer need and clear our minds of that compulsive urge to see value in what is no longer so valuable or totally valueless. So as we engage in the discussion this Easter Sunday, let us remember that buying more than you need has never made any of you or any of us more satisfied. So you go to the store, buy just what you need because it will end up causing a clutter in your house, blocking space and making lives un, uh, inconvenient. And do not have anything in your house or office space that does not add value to the house or to the space. That's my thinking. So over now to the Chair of Africa Online Media Corporation, Reverend Pan. Thank you so much, Nia Song. You know, um, when you were talking about holding being necessary, you know, under certain uh, circumstances, I thought about this pandemic period, especially last year and two years ago, where people were hoarding water and, you know, groceries. I never considered that hoarding, but I'm glad you brought that up. Before I go any further, let me just say, on behalf of Africa Online Media Corporation, I want to wish all our viewers, all our listeners, and all of our panelists a very blessed Resurrection Sunday. And um, on a personal note, this is the most important time of my life and the life of Christians, because it is the very the resurrection of Jesus Christ is the very foundation of our faith. If he did not resurrect, then we don't have any faith. This has nothing to do with denomination. This is just about our personal relationship with him. He was my Passover and I will not preach. Uh, if you see me looking tired, it's because yes, I, I, I am a bit physically tired because I was up late last night at an event, but uh, that will not keep me from participating in this program. I was not going to show my camera, but I did not want to hear from Ambassador Lisa. So I said, no matter how tired I am, I will still turn on my camera. But I want, I'm, I'm serious. This resurrection means the world to me personally. Personally. I'm telling you, that's why this tiredness don't bother me, you know, because he is risen. So I'm going to hand over to Ambassador Lisa because I don't want to you know, just keep talking about my, my favorite person in the whole wide world. And that you, right? <laughs> Who no, is this as ever? <laughs> no, 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 that person is Jesus. That person is oh, Jesus, oh, okay. not me. Okay. 
Okay, so uh, let's talk about, I mean, I know this is Resurrection Sunday, Easter Sunday for some. And, uh, oh, we've got some panelists coming up and saying people are probably already being, you know, fellowshipping with their families, dinner, that is not my case. I just had eggs and a hamburger, which was my brunch, as I'm just getting in from morning service. But hoarding, yes, I didn't realize that, uh, I, didn't, I didn't think of the stockpiling of food and things that we were doing through the pandemic or the beginning of the pandemic as hoarding. I don't know if we can, you know, especially when they're telling us there may not be any food, there may not be any water, there won't be any toilet paper. And we already know that there's so many ships out in the ocean that have supplies that are not being able to come make it on board to shore because there's no one to get it. People are out sick, people have died and they've not, um, and they've not had an opportunity to uh, have those uh, opportunities to have those uh, merchandise and things, foodstuffs to come in. So they're telling us to hoard food, to get our paper towel, get our water and things like that. I don't know if we can consider that hoarding. We, not, we may not need to put those type of labels, especially when we associate hoarding with a physiological or psychological disorder. We don't want people to all of a sudden start getting things that they don't necessarily have to have. They might start thinking, oh my God, am I a hoarder? So anyway, I am one of those persons. I'm gonna be honest and transparent. I don't know why I'm lost in my background. I haven't been lost in my background all week. And today I get lost in the background. But I am one of those people who, um, I don't stockpile things. I, I gently collect things. <laughs> But I, I must, at least I know I'm not gonna let you get away with that. I, I am thing, not. Wait, I, the I am things not. I collect. <laughs> the things I collect all have a purpose. They're all going somewhere. I've got grandkids in Africa, so I'm always buying and shopping for them. And you know, I said this is going to Kenya, this is going to Uganda, and I have these bags. And I got to remember that this child is three and this child is five. So when I'm out shopping and I, I'm finding all those little bargains, I'm buying it. And you know, I can only ship to Africa once or twice a year. So I make sure I have enough to make the, the, the shipment worthwhile. So that's not exactly hoarding. But according to the Webster's Dictionary, it is. Now, can I, can I just say something? Yes. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. This is hilarious. You know, I, I just put it on others also gently collect things. <laughs> you, you know, Ambassador Lisa, what you were saying now, you know what I thought about? I'm sorry. Uh -huh. I'm so tired of sleeping. But I thought about the alternative facts, which is another way for lies, another way of facts. Alternative facts are lies. You know, somebody <laughs> would always say they are lying. This is alternative facts. So <laughs> anyway, go ahead. That, that was so funny. You just gently collect things. All gently right. collect, yes. I gently start collecting after Christmas. Mm -hmm. All I'm going to have for next year, especially when my children were younger and I was actually really decorating and buying gifts for everybody. I start, you know, right after Christmas, getting everybody's gifts for next year. And then I don't start mm -hmm. wrapping January to July, you know, have that Christmas in July feel when I pull out all the lights and to make sure everything is working. So that's not really, that's not really hoarding. That's gently <laughs> preparation for the future. You know, the government told us to buy food and get our water in preparation of the pandemic, in preparation of us not getting lights. Now they want us to start preparing these uh, emergency preparedness kits, you know, getting your flashlights, getting Batteries, getting some water. You should have so many days per person stocked up in your bed in, in your basement. So those things we are gently collecting. We're not collecting those things. Yes, point <laughs> the new word, gently collecting. So yes. I, I've been transparent a little bit. Let me mm -hmm. tell you, my office. When I retired, it took a team of almost ten people, numerous days to come and clear me out over numerous weeks. And oh my God, oh my God. It, it sounds like somebody with a PhD in hoarding. <laughs> no, I had work stuff, ministry stuff, mm -hmm. uh, party stuff, you know, we always had parties, mm -hmm. Christmas and it was birthday party and decoration. Mm -hmm. 
things like that and wrapping papers and and, and, and I, I said, Lisa, just things that you gently collected over the years yes i was there 34 years mm -hmm. you know you, mm -hmm. we live in our offices when you're there that many years mm -hmm. so that, let me leave room for somebody else to share their their gently collecting stories Welcome, uh, Minister Deborah. Real so quick, quick uh, Ambassador Lisa. Happy yes. Easter, uh, Sister Deborah. Real quick, Ambassador Lisa. But yes. some of us don't gently collect things, and we don't collect things. When, when I moved my office virtually in 2017, I started using Zoom for all my meetings in 2017, December. Mm -hmm. It did not take anybody besides myself to move my things. Yes. I don't understand. I, I didn't move the furniture. I just collected my, my computer, went into my car. And my, I mean, my the content of my drawers, they went into my car. That was it. I'm just telling you that, you know, for those of us who don't gently collect things, we don't need so many people and so many weeks and so many days. <laughs> 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 vehicles to remove our things. As a Deborah, go ahead. Yes. Let, me, let, me, let, let me have mercy on Ambassador. Thank you. One. Thank you. Because I was... I was very uh, open and honest and I shared first so that mm -hmm. way I'm a trailblazer. So I made way for other people to come on and share their way as well. Uh, mm -hmm. Rob, about you? you, I know you stopped working a long time ago, but. Well, when I was younger, I used to collect a lot of things because I used to spend a lot of money because of my youth. I used to want to go out, have the right clothes, Mm -hmm. uh, accumulate things. I did accumulate a lot of books too. I didn't have enough shelf space. Yes. But I as I books. got older, um, I cut down on my spending and I don't afford anything anymore. Everything mm -hmm. has its proper place. I have a lot of space in my house. And so far, so good. I haven't had any problems. Okay. Y'all gonna all leave me out there to hang by myself. Okay. <laughs> I, 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 let, let me say this one year. I know it's not thing. you, Reverend Pam, because no, 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 like no, no, let, no, no, let me say something. Ambassador Lisa, I have a very large family. Mm -hmm. So I shop up until the pandemic, you know, or a year or two before the pandemic. I think just before the pandemic. Yeah, up until the pandemic. Christmas, I will shop for my siblings, for in-laws, for outlaws, anybody mm -hmm. that was connected to me, whether they were good or not, oh. for nieces and nephews, grand, I mean, that was not hurting. I was shopping for them because I like to bless people. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I, and I'm one of those people that I, I bless people for my needs, not excess, because I, I, that's my nature, but also, the, the, the secret to prosperity is giving. A lot of people don't know that. Yes, yes, it you can, is. You can't, you can't be prosperous if you keep things. You cannot. There are people that if you enter their house, you cannot walk. You cannot even walk. There are things mm -hmm. everywhere. Everywhere. And I don't even believe they know where some things are. <laughs> I, 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 and to be honest with you, I am not comfortable going to a house with those kind of things because I am scared of creatures like roaches mm -hmm. and, and rats and those things. <laughs> I, 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 I bet you people who hoard, they have tenants that don't pay rents and one of their, their relatives. Those tenants are called roaches and rats. Mm. I, bet, I bet you. Those, because when you have things everywhere, it is hard to keep the place clean. Mm -hmm. It's really difficult. You know, so near some let's hear from you. Thank you very much. I was going to turn first to Sister Deborah before I go okay. and give my point of view. So Sister Deborah, you're welcome to the program. Please, what's your take on hoarding? I tend to be a hoarder. Honestly. But Ambassador I Lisa, did you hear that? Like, I hoard yes. things like did. this. <laughs> and I was thinking, that's my sister over there. Oh, office <laughs> supplies. Office supplies. Yes. Get some light. Uh huh. Office supplies. I, I, I have a cup in here. I have a cup in the bedroom and a couple of cups in the bedroom, but they all have pens on them. They have a box that have pens. And, oh, my God. And I look at them like, I'm not going to use all of these, but I can't seem to get rid of them. <laughs> and I've been doing that forever and ever, amen. So mm -hmm. you're a pen holder? Yes. 
She she gently collects pins. And she, yes. All the Especially if they're parties. different. Yes. yes. <laughs> no, no, Ambassador Lisa, unlike you, she was a, she was she shooting straight. That's why I didn't say gently. She, in her case, in her case, she's violently collecting pens. <laughs> You know, for our retirement parties, I always get everybody, every retiree, I get them a magnet and I get them a pen. So I've got all these magnets and pens from everybody's retirement parties. Now they're, now they're on my refrigerator and their pens I'm actually starting to use now. But I still have, um, I still have favors from weddings, retirement parties. For some reason, you use them. They're so pretty after you put them together and they're so nice. You don't want to get rid of them. You know, at least when I was at work, I had my my cubicle space to line them all up on, mm -hmm. on the walls. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, I, talking about you're talking about me, I think I unconsciously <laughs> went into hiding when I was assistant editor in chief of news in the radio. I made sure every script a staff wrote was kept. I didn't know that I was causing untold. Take, or a take up of space in my office space. Now mm -hmm. I was transferred two years later to Boya, my part of the country, and I did not know what to do with that stuff. So mm -hmm. I just told staff, if you have stuff to get from here, get it. If not, the rest is going to trash. And uh, recently, before this topic came up, my wife one day said, are you a hoarder? Because she saw a few things lying around. I said, yeah, mm -hmm. because I don't have office space. My office is in my car. My office <laughs> is in my house. Because in the schools I go to, I don't have space. So I keep oh. my things in my car. So that is kind of hoarding stuff. But then mm -hmm. there's a reason for that. But uh, Ambassador Lisa and uh, Sister Deborah, don't blame yourselves because between, I mean, people aged between 55 and 94. I'm not saying that you are that range, <laughs> but people aged between 55 and 94 tend to hoard more than anybody, any other age group. The 34 okay. to 44 year range are just borderline people. But then when it becomes problematic, when it becomes a health problem, two to 6% of people are distressed or stressed because of the hoarding they've been doing along the line, even if it is unconscious. So that said, as uh, Ambassador, no, as Reverend Pam said, she does not hurt because she owns her own uh, employment. She employs herself. So she knows what to keep and what not to oh, keep. Oh, no, 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 no. Listen, me, I saw, no way. I am not going to let you get. There are people who, 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 who are self employed and they're worse than Ambassador Lisa and Sister Deborah. Gentry, and I cannot Gentry wait to hear. Harding. I cannot wait to hear from Brother Ronald and uh, uh, Ambassador Gracie. But me, I saw. You, uh, Ambassador Lisa, you guys are, are, are something else. I cannot believe these are the people I've been working with on this show. Uh, people, people who cannot, cannot be real. Ambassador Lisa said she gently collects stuff. Me as on came and said she un he unconsciously collected. Uh, uh, the, are you kidding me? You were, you were holding those uh, 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 radio doc, uh, paperwork. You are not unconsciously, you are, you are a hoarder. <laughs> Let's call a spade a spade. Don't come here and yes. say unconsciously. And then, wh why did your wife, your, I didn't even know your wife, I said that to you. I, I, when I said hoarding, I was just, it just came to me during the la last week's show as a, a sequel to yes. secondhand merchandise. Because some That's people right. who buy those things, they don't need them, it's hoarding. But for your mm -hmm. wife to ask you that question, so me as some. I, on this Resurrection Sunday, I'm labeling you and Ambassador Lisa as holders, but, but you guys have to be delivered from that today in the name of now, Jesus. Now, no, one of the, no, no more hoarding. Now, one of the definitions for hoarding said that you cannot, you, you, you collect things that are not valuable and you are in distress when it comes to throwing them away. Mm -hmm. Yes. Things that yes. are not valuable. Let me just that's that's right. My so why don't you, not why don't you They're give very Angela valuable. a chance? Why don't yes, you welcome, welcome Angela, Angela to the program and give her a chance to tell us whether she's a gentle, a gentle hot, uh, hotter or uh, <laughs> for the circumstances. Uh, 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 I'm sorry, sorry, a, gentle, a gentle collector. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm conscious that we need to hear from Brother Ronald. 
<laughs> Ronald talked already. He already said that he was not really a hoarder anymore. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, one, one Sister Angela to come in. She just came in now. Sister Angela, on, please, on, on mute, please. It, 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 before you speak, today is Resurrection Sunday. I want to yeah. make sure that our Lord did not die in vain and did not resurrect in vain. Let's hear the truth. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yeah. indeed. We can't do that on Resurrection Sunday. Amen. <laughs> no, I'm not really a hoarder. What do you mean by really? I, I, what do you mean by really? <laughs> are you a hoarder or not? Not about really or no, unreal. Not. We're not, not. We are not taking those labels. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we won't wear it. No, no, I am not. I have to say that I regularly do a purge. Maybe once or twice a year, I do a purge. Mm -hmm. I do like, but when it comes to paper, you might could call me a hoarder in that sense because you are I'm a hoarder. Records to the nth degree. Uh, so, <laughs> I, I, Ambas I, Ambassador Gracie, you're not going to get away with this. Okay. <laughs> For you to purge, you must have had hoarded some things that require purging. That's number one. <laughs> no. Okay. No, 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 number two, records, everything is digital right now. <laughs> we have even gone beyond Industry 4.0, the Internet of Things. We are in knowledge e e e economy right now. There's no reason for you to keep paper. Since you, can put oh, it yes. in the, you can put it in the computer. So I, I would say it is safe to declare that before this show, you were a hoarder, but the, the resurrection power of Jesus has delivered you from glory. Glory. <laughs> glory. <laughs> Reverend, Pam, Reverend Pam is the only person who can declare herself not a hoarder. She's the only one. And on this person, <laughs> let, 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 let me tell you what I do, and you guys can judge from that. Look, I'm a new uh, creature in Christ, okay? Amen. <laughs> amen. Let, 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 let me tell you what I do, and you guys can draw any conclusions. Whatever it is, Jesus has delivered me today. You know, you know like I said, I have, I, I like to give, I like to bless, I like to bless people. So when I, when I go to shop, I buy a lot of things to give to people. I don't keep them for myself. So I am not a hoarder. I, I, I just used to be a shopaholic. I'm not a hoarder. Yes, shopaholic is definitely one of my. But can we can we add to that the fact that there are mental hoarders? You don't. You may not keep stuff around you, but in your brain, there's so much. The like devil a is a liar. I am not a mental hoarder. I reject <laughs> it in the name of Jesus. Me as so, you will not bring me into that hoarding ministry. They're not, they, 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 I, I heard information, brain power, not, not things. So, Nia, so you cannot get me. No way. I, I protested too much. I, I was not pointing at you. I yeah, was I think that you protested <laughs> too much. I think yeah. so, Ambassador Lisa. I think she thought protest too much. Yeah. <laughs> he wasn't even finished the sentence. She already jumped on her. <laughs> yes. I, 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 Ambassador Lisa, you should know me by now. I don't let anybody <laughs> label me with any negative. I don't even let them learn. He didn't say Reverend Pam. He was just saying some people keep <laughs> on their mind and you right. jump right in there. So. <laughs> Ambassador Lisa, I can assure you, Nia, on today's Resurrection Day, Nia, on said that because of what I said. Uh, yeah, so uh, I'll be honest. Jesus is watching you. <laughs> Nia, on said because I, I said that I buy things and I give them away. So then he came and said, some people are holding their mind. Nia, so tell the truth. Over to you. <laughs> I was so, not pointing so, at you. I was just so, speaking. Was yes, just go speaking. ahead, Nia, son. She gonna, she gonna close her ears to this. <laughs> yes. I want to hear what you was finished saying about mental hoarding. Okay, in any case, what we should be doing <laughs> is focus not on the person, but on the stuff that is hoarded. Because the stuff that you hoard occupies space and makes it inconvenient for other people to either visit you or to visit you but feel very bad because they maybe see some roaches around or maybe some rodents. Mm. So hoarding in general is not very good to you, not only psychologically, but also physically because of the space it occupies. Yes, we should look at it more seriously and look back to years past before the computer came where we could store stuff. Mm -hmm. What were we doing with all those papers? What were we doing with all that other uh, all those other things that we brought along from work or from visiting uh, seminars or workshops and things like that. You brought them, you had, you realized that, oh, there was no place to keep them. And then you mm -hmm. put them in a corner, believing that you take them away tomorrow and tomorrow never comes. Mm. All right, all right, can I respond to that? 
Sure, I, I, sure, I, are you guys again draw that conclusion by you saying that I just thought about something? Our my uh, we have service on Sunday mornings and Tuesday evenings. I take notes during um the, the sermons, mm -hmm. even though they are recorded. I do take notes. I like to write them down. I like to feel like I'm being active and participatory. So I, I keep my notes. So I have my notes. So if you want to call me a scripture hoarder, so be it. But I have my notes that I've been taking in ministry for years. I have that. I'm not going to throw them away, you know. So that one yeah. I do keep. That one I do keep. Yes, I do. Okay, keep. so and you that, can come over to the dark side. Come on over to the dark side with us. Come over to the dark side. That is what I was alluding to when I said mental hoarding, because so, you write I notes. I want to go back to. I want to go back to that mental hoarding. But you also have them in your head. So please, yeah. <laughs> let's keep the conversation going. Yeah, but I want to go to the mental hoarding because I like that fact because I think a lot of our people who are suffering with mental illness and uh, mental disorders sometimes have some mental hoarding going on in their head. They have unforgiveness. They have all those things, you know, what happened to me when I was a child, um, if abused as a, as a child, they keep those things. So that's keeping those thoughts in their head constantly because we already know that hurt people hurt people. So how does hurt people hurt people? Because they don't let go of that unforgiveness and they keep those things not only in their mind and their heart and it causes them to grow up to be the same type of person that hurt them. If they were abused sexually, they end up being um, sexually sexual abusers. If they were uh, physically abused, they end up being physically abu physical abusers. So that is mental hoarding. That's um, a thought that I never thought about until you until you mentioned it. Uh, mm. Our thoughts and keeping those things in our mind because we can't let go. And that's one of the definitions that said you cannot let go of your things. It causes you distress. And rather than, you know, it's so much easier. I mean, it's equally as easy, I believe, to forgive as it is to hold on. But why can people not let go? Ambassador well, Lisa, what you just brought is, is, a, is a very important point, you know, as a uh, piggyback into what Nia Song had said. You know, when you were just saying that, I thought about it. So it, it is uh, unforgiveness is a form of hoarding because people just can't let go. They are hanging on to yeah. things, you know, mm -hmm. and so hoarding is not, I haven't looked up hoarding. So hoarding is not just about physical things, it's about hurt pain keeping things there are keeping people things yeah like, like my pastor would say there are people that have several prisons in their heart they have locked up people so many people that have hurt them over the years they lock them up in prison in jail in their hearts i will not let them go i would just say to those people on this resurrection day it's time to let go we're not talking about forgiveness today but we're talking about hoarding let go of those unforgiveness which is I, I, what I just discovered now on this show, it is part of mental hoarding. Because yes. what, what is happening is that those things are the biggest blessing blockers. Mm -hmm. you, you know, if, if you're trying to get into a driveway and there are bricks, uh, you know, or blocks that you won't be able to get in, mm -hmm. you know, and, and even God has dispatched angels to bring your blessings, they can't because all they see is the unforgiveness, all the mental hoarding, they can't even find their way through unforgiveness. So I, I, Ambassador Gracie Sands is up and yes. uh, Sister Deborah, let's go to them. Okay. Um, Hi, thank you. I just wanted to ask a quick question. Are you guys familiar with that show, Hoarding? With what? That Hoarding. comes on TV. The show is called Hoarding. Have no. you ever seen it? I, I, I know no. of it. I've never seen it, but I do know. I, I didn't know there was a program like that. I, I didn't yes, know there was is. a program there's, like yes. that. Yes, there's, there's a, a show that comes on. Um, and two psychologists, two doctors go to the home of three different couples. They tell three different stories and they go to their home and mm. they inspect the home. They talk to them about what their hoarding oh. issues are, how it affects the family members. It's kind of like what? a documentary. Yes. It's an mm -hmm. excellent, it, I've watched it several times to the point that, I mean, it can be absolutely grieving. But what I wanted to say about that was because these are psychologists walking through each of these family stories, they they hire they hire movers called uh you know that trucking company called Got Junk, 
and they come and clean out houses and stuff. They Mm. hire them and they walk these people through decluttering their homes. Mm. And what often happens is every time, actually, as soon as they begin to start throwing things out, you see them manifest their fears, their insecurities come out. They get angry. They fly into rages. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some of them, their homes have been absolutely, they had, if they didn't get their homes cleaned out, by a certain date, they lost. There are several families who lost their homes. One lady was her house was so infested with mold and dead animals oh, that no, it no. threatened her home. I'm talking about hoarding to the nth degree. Yes, this is severe hoarding. This is, this is severe hoarding. But yes. one of the things that they linked that every almost every family was linked to was grief. Mm -hmm. grief Mm -hmm. of losing a loved one caused them Mm -hmm. to hoard because they're trying to hold on. We're talking about mental Mm -hmm. hoarding. So it's not only grief, it's the loss of a loved one, it's unforgiveness, Mm -hmm. it's a marriage, a divorce, a child who left home that a parent lost. Though all of those were issues that came up that led to the hoarding situation. Wow. Mm -hmm. And um, Mm -hmm. so I just wanted to bring that out that, you know, we're spot on there. The things that lead to hoarding is the manifestation of the mental hoarding, right. of the Ooh. mental issues that's going on. Yes. And it plays mm-hmm. out in hoarding. Physically, it has it, very it little to do with, yeah, it has very little to do with things. And it has mm-hmm. very little to do with money or anything like that. Wow. Wow. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just wanted to add that to the discussion. No, that was, oh, that's very so, good. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, I was just going to say um, that most people who are hoarders in that degree have a hard time letting go of things and they don't know how to let go of it because it is a mental situation you have to get to get to the mind to get them to understand that it's okay Mm -hmm. yes you know i want to say this on the the continent because my my family members they know me I, i i like things organized i like things to be there was even a time my daughter was the one that stopped me in my kitchen. I, my cabinets were labeled. So you knew every spice that was in the spice cabinet. You knew what was so. My, my daughter was telling me, Mom, this is not a pharmacy. You can do that in your pharmacy. Don't do it here. <laughs> so, so I promise. I, when, so when I move, I'm serious. Everything that's was. CD. <laughs> no. <laughs> Now that's she's a pharmacist, so she thought she was still at work. <laughs> you, you know, so my my daughter told me, Mom, this kitchen is not a pharmacy. Just uh-huh. do that in, in your. I'm telling you, all the cabinets were labeled, you know. So you didn't even need to open the cabinet to know what was in there. If you were looking for something, just read the labels. And the, I, I use I use a label maker, and oh. I labeled, you know, so it was neatly arranged. Even my shoes, they all have where they go. My clothes, when I bring my clothes from the cleaners. I put them in my, uh, I have a closet in the living room, but it's hot in Houston, so we, we don't really have a need for a coat closet. So I put it there when I have time, then I take it and put it back where it came from. So, but she told me, so uh, So my family, they know when I get into somebody's house and I see things that are not in the right place, I rearrange it. There was one time that I visited a, a, a cousin back home. I mean, they were doing very well. They were very well to do. The husband came back from home he did not recognize his home. Mm. He, he did not know what had happened. They had this big wall unit sitting right in the middle, making the house look small. And it was such a beautiful, big, big home. And all I did was had it moved to the wall. And it just opened up the whole, it just transformed the whole place. I had another relative that had a, a floor rug that was as old as John the Baptist, the days of John the Baptist. <laughs> And so I threw it away and she was like, no, that's my rack. I said, no, 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 no. This rack belongs to the pit of hell. This rack cannot clean anything because it, it by itself is dead. So those kind of things, people hang on. Okay, wh- why are you hanging on to a floor rack? Why? You can get it another one. Best. It cleans best. All brooms know all the best. corners of their hearts. <laughs> and, okay. and speaking of the continent, we'd like to welcome Praise Ogaga. Oh, good. She is she is zooming in from Nigeria, and today's topic praise is hoarding. Awesome. Is she there? Are you there? Praise. She she, she, yeah, she just unmuted. Yes, yes. 
Good yes, evening, we're talking like about hoarding, the collecting of things useful or non-useful. We're talking about hoarding to the fact that to the point where you can't get rid of it. And if you try to take it, it causes distress in your life. What say you over there in Nigeria? <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, can I do without the video, please? Sure. Yes. Sure. yes. Um, well, it's 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 a big it's a big issue over here. Um, so let me use my house as an as an example. We have things. We have a lot of things that we do not actually need. But um, I'd, I'd say as a culture, we just would keep them just in case the day would come when we when we would. Um, need them but the day never comes actually so we just keep piling up things and um it's it's a big issue actually it's a big issue here especially for the women now now praise let me just ask you piggyback on that because you said especially for the women do you here we do a lot of um uh, psychological shopping uh what is the word i want to use uh we do a lot of shopping as, as instead of eating we shop you know, we're shopaholics. Do you think that the women in Nigeria holding on and shopping and buying things that they think they're going to need or that someone else may need, are they doing it for hoarding sake? Are they doing it because it fills a void in their life? Does it really fill any void? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it really doesn't yeah. fill any void. Mm -hmm. Just an habit, I'd say. Okay. Yeah. I, I, let, let me ask you guys a question. Mm -hmm. I, 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 do you guys think this has anything to do with a consumer mentality? A what? A consumer Consum menta mentality. Because mm -hmm. it, to me, there are two kinds of people on this earth, producers and consumers. People that consumers tend to just want to like, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. So, so do you think this hoarding thing is connected to a consumer mentality? No, I, I would not. I would not say that. Um, everything that I buy, I have a plan and a purpose to give to somebody. Eventually, you know, I see it now. I, I can tell people you cannot wait to one of my fellowships. They wait until December first to talk about who we're going to give in in Africa for Christmas. I said you can't talk to us about the December. We need to be talking about this in July. We yes. need. To or doing whatever we're going to do in July, July in preparation for December. I'm a planner. You know, I see, I'm a planner a year out. I'm already ready for next year. You know, as soon as Passover was over, I'm ready for 2023. So I buy things that I know I'm going to need for Passover. I, I'm picking up this so that at the time, you're not buying all this stuff at the last minute. So you get a little here, a little there. And yes, then I have to gently collect it and have to find some place to store it. So uh, but you know, you know that, that, based. No, that, that's you though. Don't use yourself as an example because you, you hoard uh, for the benefit of others, not yourself. Most holders mm -hmm. don't hoard for the benefit of others. No, it's not. That's uh, true. I, I, okay, I, I want to ask this then. Ambassador Gracie was shaking her head about that. You guys can weigh in. I know for a fact that covetousness is part of it. I, I will tell you. I know a couple of people that if they see, they watch this show, they see what all of us here are wearing, they want to go, they'll start looking for what we are wearing. And, oh. and it's not that they need it. Yes, there are people that they see what you wear, they want to get it at all costs. They'll take a picture and have it made, even yeah. if they don't need it. Yes, there are people like that, those are holders. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I think covetousness is, is connected to hoarding too. Well, I think that depends on your mentality and your state of mind. Would you agree, my sisters? I can ask my sisters because, you know, as a kid growing up, uh, my mother always said we were only allowed to wear a gown once. And she was a dressmaker, so she made all our clothes. So mm -hmm. constantly, as an adult, I had to have two or three gowns already in the closet. Mm -hmm. in case, you know, you call me for an event and I need to go. It's not a problem. Is it formal? Is it semi-formal? Whatever the occasion is, I already have it. But I think when, as uh, Apostle Angela was saying, when you look at people who are having these mental issues, um, stress and grief, I, I know a woman who, when she died and we went into her home to help clean it out, 
we found magazines, everything that was in her bed were magazines and newspapers from 1995. So somewhere in 1995, something traumatic happened and she was stuck. We come, it's 2011 and she was stuck there with 1995. So sometimes we don't always know, they don't even know. You just happen to know that that's an issue because you find things from that particular period. So you want to know what, what, what happened to them? What, what happened in 1995? Uh, as Angela said, was it divorce? Was it a divorce? Um, you know, what caused them to be stuck right there? And sometimes people are just stuck there. And that's why mm -hmm. the mind, the mind needs to really happen, um, that deliverance to help them get free, to help them understand whatever happened it happened. Let's move on. Let's go on. I have a, a, a gentleman friend. He just was sharing with me that his wife had been dead for five years and he was just now getting ready to get rid of her things. He said, because it was hard for him. So at least he recognized that he needed to get rid of them, but it took him, it's taken him five years to be mm -hmm. able to the closet and deal with her, you know, the missing, missing her to deal with getting rid of her things. But Ambassador Lisa, uh, not not getting rid of uh, a beauty, of a, lo a loved one that is lost or a dead person's stuff is not hurting. I will not think so. It's just that you've not brought yourself to the po point where you, okay. you, you can get, if he was still shopping for the dead wife, that would be another <laughs> problem. It would be a bigger problem than hurting. Uh -huh. he, he, he yeah, that's true. That's in, a bigger yeah. problem. Yeah, you know, so, right. but, but I want us to talk about this coverage because if you see something that Ambassador Lisa wears and you have this desire, you must get it, and you don't need it, you are harder. Ambassador Gracie. Well, I was thinking about that. I think it goes to, I think it goes to motivation, and I think it goes to, because, because you know, I'm a bit of a clothes horse myself, and so it's not hard for me, you know, retail therapy is, you know. <laughs> retail therapy is the word I was looking retail for. Retail therapy yes. is, every, oh, is every woman's thing, right? Retail yes, therapy. <laughs> retail yeah. therapy. I, I so like I that. Just, if I just want to buy something, or even if I like your dress and I just feel like I want to, you know, have that dress, that's one thing. But if I get to the point where I'm buying clothes all the time and I have an inability to let them go, that's that what it I actually goes to the to the neglect of my mental state, then that's that's what because hoarding has a mental element to it, and then it's more than just covetousness or just wanting to buy pretty things but it's how you it's what they how they feel about those things you know what i mean and, no, why, but, but, and, I, I, and but, their their emotional attachment to those things that's the word i was trying it. to get to but, but, there's but, an emotional attachment to what they bought one of the things the psychologist brought out and bring out in this show is that is that a lot of times the stuff that they buy is comforting to them Mm -hmm. That it, having many things around them is comforting. It makes them feel safe. It, it, they find security in it. So those are some of the kind of elements that make hoarding hoarding as opposed to just being materialistic. Okay. You know but, what I mean? But I need yeah. to say something, Ambassador Lisa. If somebody loses a loved one, and if, 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 if hoarding is... Uh oh, so there's some background. If hoarding is going to help them grieve, wait, is that something? Uh, if somebody has, can you guys no, hear just something? Go ahead. We're hearing you. Just There's a background noise, but just go ahead. No, no, we need to address it, the background noise. That's what I asked you. Where is it coming from? Oh, God, I see you. It looks like it's from Ambassador Lisa. Oh, no, it's not me. Oh, no, no. Uh, okay. But, but anyway, no, no. no. If, if somebody loses a loved one, the noise is gone. And hoarding is going to help them with their grief by all means. That may mm -hmm. be their grief therapy. That's not what we are talking about. Mm -hmm. I'm saying okay. that there are some people, they see what Ambassador Grace uh, Angela is, is, is uh, wearing. There's this uncontrollable desire to have it. That is not uh, wanting to just buy something that look nice. No, it, it, it is a problem. It is a problem because you don't have to have something that somebody yeah. has. And you don't mm -hmm. always have to have it. It's, it's a big problem, even bigger than hoarding. It's a big problem. I, I, I even think it goes to self-esteem, insecurities, you mm -hmm. know, competition, competition, covetousness, rivalry, all that nonsense. You don't have to always have, if you say something that's nice, you want it, get it. That's not what I'm talking about. But okay. 
you, you have this desire that every time that you see something with this person, you must have it. That is a big problem. So that's why I was saying that, you know, I, I come in, I, I'm, I'm so excited about this show because I learned so much. I, I, like me, I've never heard of retail therapy, but I've been wow. using it. No, I, I've been using that's the truth. Hey, my dear, I, I, that's the truth. I, I've been using it, but I didn't even know they label it lyrical therapy. therapy. Yes. There's so much out there to acquire. You can't know everything. Nobody knows everything. Mm -hmm. I learned a lot it, from this show. Like, it's like, like eating. It's like eating when you're sad. You know, you got to have that pint of ice cream. Yes. Yeah. Well, eat. Red, red, red velvet cake. Uh, red velvet cake with banana. Inside. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. let, me, uh, let me bring let me bring something which will be controversial because uh, uh -oh. and it may come it may come up next month in the discussions we're going to have uh, uh -huh. when 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 a man accumulates uh, women in in his life uh -huh. he has girlfriends left and right is that is that hurting <laughs> human beings hum hurting wives <laughs> <laughs> let's ask so. ronald ronald what do you say oh my god so, I'm so, my what do you so, say Solomon ronald Hoda? as a man is that hurting I think it is. What, what, was Solomon a hoarder? <laughs> yes, Solomon was definitely a hoarder. Sorry, Ronald. A wife hoarder. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, Ronald, what were you saying? I think you do your wife or your mate as a possession. So that mm -hmm. is a type of, a type of hoarding. Because no one else can be around them. And then again, you spend a whole lot of money on them to keep them. So I think that's hoarding. Okay. Yeah, so you're looking for trouble. Yes, Deborah. <laughs> see, see, you can't. Add, let, let me add, praise, praise. As a Nigerian woman, and we do know that it, on the continent, it is okay to have um, more than one wife, especially the Muslim. I mean, I know Muslims here who have more than one wife. They have as many as they can afford. But I know that on the continent, it is okay to be a second or third wife. How do you feel as a young woman? Because you are, are definitely of a different generation. You're of a much younger generation than all of us. So how do you feel as a young woman in Nigeria um, about the hoarding of extra wives and girlfriends and concubines? She's unmuted, but she's not speaking. Yeah. Um, okay. First of all, I don't, I don't think that's hoarding or if that's what we want to call it, then it's fine. Um, the women, the women that are getting married, to obviously have some values um, to give to them. They have, they, they have, they have their, they have their, um, they, they have what they are bringing to the table, even if it's just producing children, right? So <laughs> I wouldn't say, <laughs> I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say, getting married to more than one woman is hurting. I wouldn't say that. Okay, okay but let, let me ask you something, Ambassador Lisa. Let me just ask her a Go question. Uh -huh. My great grandfather had 300, uh, 350 what? children. What? From, um, for, from 42 wives. What? So wow. you, you don't think of praise, you don't think that was hoarding? Wow. Angela, <laughs> <laughs> close your mouth. <laughs> praise. <laughs> Wow, that, that's a lot, actually. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, so why do you draw the line? <laughs> wow. 42 wives and 350 children. Yeah, he was a king. He lived in the palace, and each of the wives had their own houses on the palace. Uh. Yes. I, it goes well, to, it, wait, wait. Let, it, I want to hear a phrase. As an African man, I think that's, that's how they measure their wealth, actually. So I don't know. Hmm. <laughs> That's, that's an interesting point. That's an interesting yeah. point. She says how they measured their wealth. They measured their wealth, yes. Where, where in our generation, it may be the cows. You know, it may be, you know, that we keep cows um, that, that measure our wealth. So um, I never thought about the multiple wives and concubines. And no, Solomon was not a wise. Solomon happened to be a wise man. I don't know if he was wise because he had... 300 something concubines. Oh, he was not, that was not the way the wisdom. Yeah, somebody, somebody made that comment and said he was wise. As the, he was a wise, <laughs> he was not wise, but he had 300 concubines. Well, it, well, it was because of the, he resolved the issue of the two mothers and the dead child. That's why they, they, they called him wise when he said, let's wise man. Child. Yes. yes, it had nothing to do with all these concubines and, and no. the wives. Wow. And, wow. and Pastor Lisa, you said there are Muslims in this country with multiple wives. You mean with concubines because 
Bigamy is illegal in this country. No, they 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 can legally well they can, if they're married by <laughs> the man in their uh, in their masjids they can marry more than one wife. In I this have, country. In this country, I have a friend of mine. But, but, but can they have more than one marriage certificate? Now, from what I understand, I don't think so. From what I understand, they have some kind of certificate, but I don't believe it's registered with the city or the state. It, but it, they can get some kind of certificate from their masjid because I have a friend who just who has three wives. Uh, okay, yeah, but but probably has a marriage certificate just with one of them. They they have memoranda of understanding. That we will oh, live, together, we'll live together for good or for bad until death do us part. And, and, and they're, having, they're, they're having that emotional satisfaction me, out of me. keeping these uh, women in his, in their keeping uh, in their uh, compounds because they have emotional satisfaction out of those, and they that that keeps them satisfied. And of course, maybe the women are also satisfied having one man taking care of all of them. But in those good old days when I was growing up, I learned that men got married to more than one wife for agricultural reasons, because they had large farms and mm -hmm. they wanted these women to be uh, farm, farm, uh, farm okay. hands and bring up the children who also have bring up the, keep the farms going. So I think uh, in those days was different, but today it's not the same. That is why uh, I don't believe in polygamy anymore because these days the women will be fighting each other every day. Oh, you used to polygamy. believe in you used to believe in polygamy when I was growing up because I was in a born in a polygamous home. Yes. Well, well, you know that's good because we're going to be talking about polygamy after the a marriage series. Oh. So May is going to be hot. Uh -oh. You guys, you guys <laughs> have, uh, uh, <laughs> Madam, Madam producer, start looking for. We need uh, Ambassador uh, 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 Gracie. We need a marriage counselor. We need somebody that can talk on marriage. We, and we're going to be doing uh -huh. our March series. We, we normally do it in February, but we moved it this year because of things that we're doing in February. All right. Back to you, Nia. So. Well, I was going to see uh, if uh, brother, brother Ronald still has something to add. I know he always has something anyway to, to add about this uh, uh, hoarding. Uh, have, you said when you were young, you were trying, you, you tried your hand at it. Not consciously, of course, but <laughs> today, what do you do? Today, um, I, I do collect a lot of books. I do collect a lot of books because I love to read. But I have put a lot of things in stores because I think that is kind of like hoarding because I pay for storage for my books mm. and other things that was in my house. But other than that, I don't have a problem with hoarding. I don't think so anyway. You know, I told you I love books as well. So whenever I um, when before my bookcase fell and I had to pack up all my books, whenever I ordered books, I always ordered three of everything. I ordered one because I was reading it, one to go on my bookshelf because my bookshelf had to look nice, and then I always ordered one to give away because somebody always wanted to borrow your book, and then right. never so I always bought three of everything, just three of everything, so that I always had something to share something from my bookcase and then some, whatever it is that I was reading. So that wasn't really hoarding either. That was um, being a uh, giver as well. Okay. So as we approach the top of the hour, can we say when we come back, we talk about the inconveniences of hoarding? Because I believe hoarding is not just for the individual. It, it's, it's a social inconvenience to the community, to the house in which you live and like, I mean, people get expelled from the apartments because they have, they've cluttered the whole place and the land, the renter, the renting office doesn't want them to stay there anymore because there's mm -hmm. no space for anybody, even in their hallways. So let's mm. look at that after the top of the hour because I believe uh, it's getting close to that, uh, Reverend Pa. I'm um, here, yeah, we have uh, one minute. Oh, okay, okay. All right, let me, let me go ahead and, and play the anthem, okay? Let me just go ahead and play the anthem. Yes. Oh, Africa. Oh, Sorry. Africans, Africans, Africa. Africa. 
Africans, Africans for Africa. Africans, Africans for Africa. Africans, Africans for Africa. Africans, Africans for Africa. Africans, Africans for Africa. Listen to my story. God gave us a wisdom. He guides our footsteps, makes us shine and transform. Hey, as one people, with so many cultures, yet indeed we are one. Stand up, Africans. Let's say. Stand up, Africans. Let's save Africa. It's time to come together, promote awareness, progress, and solution. Hey. Africans, Africans for Africa. Africans, Africans for Africa. Africans, Africans for Africa. All Africans can rally for a common cause. To believe without judgment in what our brother does. To identify and resolve our challenges. To allow each other's ideas without regard to standards. As one people with so many cultures. Yes, indeed, we are one. Stand up, Africans, for Africa. Let us all plaguing our continent. Stand up, Africans, let's save Africa. Let us empower Africans in and out of Africa. Stand up, Africans, for Africa. That's a good way to start. Stand up, Africans. Let's save Africa. They have all the resources we need to benefit our society. for everyone if we believe prosperity for Africans if we believe medical facilitation for Africans if we believe stand up stand up Africa is for Africa Africa Online Media Corporation that's a good way to start stand up Africa. Africa is a cradle of civilization. The motherland. Stand up, Africans. For Africa. We were enslaved not because we were weak, but because of our hospitality. Stand up, Africans. Let's see Africa. Jump on the Africa online miracle jet. Stand up, Africans, for Africa. Together we shall succeed, together we will win. Stand up, Africans, let's see Africa. We are writing our own story, the truth and we shall tell it to the world. Stand up, Africans, for Africa. 
Africa. No more lies. Africans own Africa. No more lies. Africans own Africa. Did you guys hear that? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> no more lies. Africans own Africa. Sorry, I'm trying to stop. Stop sharing. We have somebody coming into the um yes. Uh, I, uh, okay. So I quickly reached out to one of my brothers, to one uh, of my uh, awesome. Uh, awesome. <laughs> we, we we trust you. And uh, and of course, I just texted you guys a lineup for me. So we have five Sundays in May. I didn't even know that when I was talking about the series. May, May is going to be hot. I encourage everybody to show up on May. In, in May, it's going to be very, very hot. Mm -hmm. wow. it's, going be, it's going to be hotter than August in Houston. Uh -uh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's going to be. So um, uh, next, next week, we're going to be talking about first aid or the lack of it. What is it? Uh, first aid. First aid. Oh, first aid. Mm -hmm. Or the lack of it. We have had a lot of people die on the continent because somebody didn't know CPR or somebody didn't know how to stop a bleeding or how to handle a snake bite. No, just simple things or a bee sting. So we're going to be talking about that. Uh, we, may, we may have a doctor from the continent confirm. And uh, either way, we have our doctors here, Dr. B and Dr. Ogoji. So we're going to be talking about first aid. So if you know anybody who works in an emergency room here, a nurse, a doctor, or anybody will want them on that show. All right, so Ambassador Lisa, over to you. Yes, thank you, Reverend Pam. Um, and um, let's see. Welcome, Jamal. I know I snatched you up during the break to join our conversation. I'll get back to you in a second, but Africa Online has an ongoing fundraising project called Operation Borehole 55. And it is our desire to see boreholes put on the continent of Africa in every country on the continent of Africa. Our first project in Sierra Leone has already started and is completed. And we will soon be moving on to Kenya and we so are so excited. But we cannot do this work without you. We need your help. So we would love for you to visit africaonlinetv.org and to make a deposit, make a donation toward our Operation Borehole 55. It does not matter the dollar, the rand, the shilling, or the naira, or the pound, however much you desire to give and how often you desire to give, we would greatly appreciate it. All of our finances go towards our borehole project. There's no administrative fees. There is no fees coming out for airline tickets to go there and see. We have people and engineers on the ground in every country that we select that will be overseeing that project that we trust to oversee the project for us. So we just need your help so that we may bless our daughters and our sons over on the continent of Africa. Again, like I said, we finished Sierra Leone and not only did the engineer finish the work with digging the borehole, he has agreed to at his cost wire the delivery room and the waiting room with electricity as well. So not only did we put in water, we got electricity as well. And we're looking to see that same type of project go on in every country <clears throat> on the continent that we select. So you can give us one time donation, you can make it a monthly, you can do it quarterly, however you want to do it, no matter how much or how little, we appreciate all of your donations. Again, Visit our website at www.africaonlinetv.org. Go to YouTube and you'll be able to see the uh, fundraising show. You will be able to see some of the uh, uh, videos that were sent in from the continent uh, with their desire for a borehole. And you can visit our, excuse me, our YouTube at Africa Online Broadcast or here on Facebook, you can find us at Africa Online TV and you can see any of our broadcasts talking about the borehole project. You'll see, um, the fundraiser, we'll probably dig it up and repost it so that uh, people will be able to see the fundraiser that we did for our borehole. And we're looking to do another fundraiser this year. So if you have not given yet, I want to thank uh, Pastor Willa. I know she is on somewhere. I can't remember where she's at, but I know she's on somewhere. We thank her for being a monthly contributor, <clears throat> a recent monthly contributor to our borehole project. And we're looking to have many, many more. So thank you so much, Reverend Pam. Thank you. Thank you, Madam. Thank you, uh, Sister, I mean, Ambassador 
Lisa, <coughs> nous ne cesserons point de vous demander, de vous prier, de nous aider à construire le point d'eau en Afrique, c'est-à-dire Operation Borehole 55. Il y a 55 pays en Afrique et nous voulons construire des points d'eau dans les centres de, de, de santé développés pour aider les populations du coin. Donc, on a commencé au Sierra Leone, on a déjà construit euh, un point d'eau au Sierra Leone parce que l'eau, c'est la vie. Nous, nous vous prions de faire des contributions sur notre website www.africaonlinetv.org pour qu'on continue à, à construire des, des adductions d'eau en Afrique. Vous nous, vous nous prions, nous vous sollicitons, s'il vous plaît, si vous pouvez bien vouloir nous donner quelque chose sur notre website pour qu'on puisse continuer à construire des adductions d'eau dans les divers pays africains. Il y en a, comme j'ai dit, 55. Merci beaucoup et à la semaine prochaine. Mais notre discussion continue sur Harding. Thank you. <laughs> hey, I'm also looking for some other languages to come online and join us so that we can give out our announcements in more than just French. So if you you know, can give us in Swahili. You speak Swahili, don't you? I don't speak enough to do that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> But if you know of anybody who speaks that language, just tell them to come on and be a part of our show. We would love to have them here. So before the break, we were talking about someone, Reverend Pam's great grandfather or grandfather who had. Oh, Ambassador Lisa, you you, you want a, a go now attack my great grandfather? Is that what you said? <laughs> I'm messing with you. Go ahead. Oh. <laughs> so, so I thought that question was interesting because we talked about Muslims who can have more than one wife. So mm -hmm. during the break, I reached out to my brother, and uh, he so graciously uh, consented to join us. Welcome, Jamal. Mm -hmm. I, I, I could see from your earlier picture that you were out and about. But if you can, he's just... muted. Yeah, I know he's muted, but he should be able to hear me. Okay. Can you, can you go on, go on. I okay. want to, we, here you are. I can, you. I can hear you. Hello. Hello, everyone. Happy hey. holiday. Uh, happy Easter. We were, happy talking, Easter. We, were, we were talking about um, Muslims having more than one wife. And the question came up. Uh, we were talking about hoarding. Is having more than one wife and girlfriends hoarding? And are they legally married? And I said, let me reach out to the Muslim brother and ask straight from the horse's mouth and speculate. Uh, oh, we're hearing a lot of statics on the uh, um, uh, on the background, but before before Brother Jamal answer, I want to make sure none of our listeners think Brother Jamal is a horse. Is a what? A horse. That was just a joke. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you, you said you wanted to hear it from the horse's own mouth. Oh. The, oh. <laughs> I thought you said whore, a host, H O S T. Now, Jamal Pam, is not she a got jokes this afternoon. <laughs> no, no, because his video's not a horse. He's not a horse. We, I want no, to hear no. from a Muslim. We want to hear from a Muslim standpoint what is the situation with marrying more than one wife and are they legally married? Oh, Lord. I don't know where you are. If you're posing a question to me, I'll answer it if you're ready. Yes, we're ready. With the name of God, most gracious, compassionate. Hi, salam alaikum, everybody. Peace be unto uh, you all. Wa alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Wa alaikum salam. Wa alaikum salam. Thank you. I hope everyone is having a great day. Yes, we yeah, are. Yeah, we Thank are. Thank you. Great. So am I. I'm in the park getting some exercise and some fresh air. Thank Good you. for you. Okay, so I'm an American, and I, I can't speak for some of the Muslims throughout the world. I can only tell you from my understanding. Um, in this country, it's illegal to have more than one wife, but mm -hmm. there's exceptions, like the Mormons and even mm -hmm. some Muslims who have applied and, and have more than one wife. So I do know some Muslims here in this country that have more than one wife. The Holy Quran, our, our Holy Bible, so to speak, says that you can have up to four wives, but you must treat them equally. Mm -hmm. But one is best if ye but knew. 
Mm-hmm. Because if you had four wives, that's four separate resources, or mm-hmm. four separate mouths. And if you have children by these women, that's four separate families. So it could be quite difficult if you if you're not financially able and prepared. My understanding is that if you have one wife, you can't get another wife if the first wife don't approve. Right. Mm, that's good. Mm-hmm. Some, oh, okay. Some may differ, but I tend to say, mm-hmm. you know, happy wife, happy life. If you <laughs> want to do something against her will, you might find a disgruntled individual. Mm-hmm. Um, the intentions is not to just, you know, say, well, I got all these women like you're, you know, like you're a pimp or something. It's uh, a lot of times it's for <clears throat> orphanage cases, widows, and things of that nature. People who might have lost their husbands in war or imprisonment. So you have these children that, that need, you know, some type of uh, support system. Mm. So sometimes a male, uh, a married male, um, fulfill that role for an additional family. So it's nothing to be glamorized. It's something that God approves, but again, he says one is better if he but knew. Um, to answer a second question, I think you might have posed in terms of hoarding. If you have one wife and a girlfriend, <laughs> you're committing adultery. That's right. There's, there's mm-hmm. no such things as girlfriends in the religion or boyfriends either, for that matter. Mm-hmm. So if you're going to have a second wife, or a second person in your life, you know, you either have to be married or a good friend, and, and that's it, ideally speaking, religiously mm. speaking. Can I that's say something? Kind of how I understood it. I've never had more than one wife myself. Good for but, uh, you. <laughs> but I do know a few. I know not many, but I know a few who, who do have uh, more than one wife. Does that answer too. your question? Yes, yes, thank you. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. Thank you. We appreciate that. That okay, was good. I can go now. I, I go. No, please, I one go. second before you go, Bajama. Thank you so much. I just learned from you. My grandmother, my paternal grandmother was a, a, a Muslim, but uh, I, I was too young when she died. I just knew she went to the mosque every morning. And not too long ago, we went to the mosque and did what they call sadika to give food to the people on her behalf. You know, but I, I didn't know that the Quran limited to four wives. Uh, my yeah. grandfather was not a Muslim. He had 42 wives and 350 children. I don't know how many of them are still alive. Wow. You know, there are a few of them who are alive, you know, but uh, that's why it's so difficult for people from my, my uh, for us to marry from our tribe because you may be marrying a relative. But as far as, and I like the fact that the Quran said the first wife must agree to it. <laughs> The appro- mm-hmm. Let me advise all the wives: don't approve, don't share your husband with no. That's right. <laughs> I would never, I would never do that. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry that the, the the risk outweighs the benefit. Benefits. Don't absolutely. Do it. Don't think that by, by agreeing, the husband would like you more. Nah, that's as, as generous as I am. That's one thing I don't share. Nope. So all I all right. Share. Let me let me let me mm-hmm. make a slight slight correction. Uh, in terms of the approval, as far as the first wife approving, that's not in the Quran. That's more of a tradition because oh. when I say tradition, it's we we use the Quran as a source, but we also use the sayings of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So that's okay. a saying or instruction from him, not okay. specifically the Quran. In terms of the wife approving, okay, it does say the wife. It does say one is best. In mm-hmm. All right. Thank you, you so much. Before. But and there are other cultures where they may have 20 wives. <laughs> so, so at least there's some type of uh, limitation that, uh, that the Quran wow. speaks of. Mm-hmm. Not, not in my country. But mm-hmm. I know some cultures, They even like I said, the Mormons, they may have 20 wives. I didn't know that about Mormons either. 
Yeah, that's the religion. Yeah, I knew that Mormons do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, yeah, because they live out in that town, right? Where they, they live. Utah. In Utah. The biggest polygamy. In Utah. Polygamous. Yeah, in Utah. Utah. They have the, yeah, mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. Thank you, yeah. Jamal, for helping us out in the area, in that area. We appreciate you. For being You're welcome. To Take Africa care, online everyone. today. Thank you. Okay. Take care, everybody. <laughs> All right. Take care. Care. And, uh, enjoy Bye. your workout. Enjoy your workout. Thank yes. you. God bless. Mm -hmm. So that's interesting. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes. I guess, you know, world religion classes are necessary. I never want to take one because I didn't want to be indoctrinated. I'm like, ah, I don't want to be indoctrinated. I don't, need to yeah. go. Yeah. <laughs> I don't need to go here. I don't need to go there. But some things we do need to know. If we're going to be well-rounded. I mean, I think if you're well-rounded to start off, you won't, you know, you won't have that issue. That was when I was much younger, you know, didn't know very much. Uh, wasn't mature in things, but um, we need to know certain things so that we can have conversations. We can have healthy conversations. Exactly. Mm -hmm. There's no reason for us to be fighting with the uh, other religions. We should be able to find common ground. Mm -hmm. I, I, but I'm getting I, I, off topic. I agree. Yes, you are. Yes, I'm sorry. I'm getting off topic. We're talking about hoarding, and uh, uh, Nia Sung had a question he wanted to pose. Oh, well, real quick, yeah. so, so since you, you went off topic, let me follow you a little bit. So is there, okay. religious, is, is there religious hoarding? Are there people that, I, I know they are church hoppers, but are there people that they go to the mosque, they go to the temple, they go to the church, they go to everywhere, every crusade? Uh, is that a form of hoarding? Wow. No. Ah, I was, they're not coming. No. They just they just visiting around. They're sprinkling themselves all around. Yeah, I'm, mm -hmm. coll I'm collecting gently collecting stuff. Don't and gently <laughs> collecting, they're gently collecting wisdom. They're no, 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 <laughs> no. They're gently collecting doctrines, and then they're getting confused. Yes, mm -hmm. my yeah, I That's agree. true. My girlfriend calls me yeah. people. She's like, you always collecting people everywhere you go. That, you that is good. So yeah, people who are that. That is very good. Yes, I'm, I like being a people hoarder. Yes. All right, yes. I so think Deborah, we're, we're my years. question, my question was, what are the consequences of hoarding? What are the inconveniences? What are mm -hmm. the things that we should avoid if we are hoarders? Hmm. The table is. I mean, I, I I don't have a particular person to start with, but well, if <laughs> yes, go ahead. I think so, one of the major hazards or one of the major dangers of hoarding, believe it or not, is health. Yeah. It is dangerous health. to your health. Oh, health. Uh -huh. To your health. Because uh, after so long, um, when you see, I'm, I'm talking about serious hoarding now. I'm not talking about, you mm -hmm. know, we just got too many books that we don't need, have nothing to do with, or too many dresses mm -hmm. or whatever. Right. But I'm talking about somebody who has a serious emotional problem and they're seriously hoarding. And in every one of those cases, uh, dirt and dust and bacteria begins to gather in the home mold that makes for an unsafe uh, home environment. So it's dangerous to health and it's dangerous to family relationships. Every one of those families had challenges with, uh, some, they had children in there. Some of the children mm. had to be taken out of the home because it wasn't safe for them to be there. And so it broke up the family. Uh, other family members were angry when they tried to help the hoarder, but the hoarder would refuse to help. Every time they tried to come and help clean out the house, it was a battle. So it was constant mm. family turmoil, family uh, fighting, infighting, uh, hurt feelings, woundedness, unforgiveness. It was a mess. Mm. So those two are the major things that are that are definitely um, uh, hazards or what, you know, uh, um, disadvantages to hoarding um, is health and relationships. Both okay. of them were destroyed. Thank you. Okay. Awesome. So what, any other disadvantages? Thank you very much for that. Mm -hmm. Please let's continue the conversation. Mm -hmm. Deborah, Ronald, praise. Well, I think um, a disadvantage, like Pastor Angela said, is the health. Mm -hmm. Meaning that I, I had a friend that used to hoard. And when I used to go over 
and this is him. He had a lot of rodents and roaches in his house. Mm -hmm. And it was very all cluttered that he couldn't even walk around. Mm -hmm. And so, sometimes he got to the point that he would drink out of a cup and leave it on a table and the mold would build up because it was back there so long. Oh my mm -hmm. God. So mm -hmm. it was problems like that. So eventually he got himself together, but he still liked to come back because he owns about five cars and only drive one. Oh. <laughs> so mm -hmm. that's my experience of a disadvantage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can pass a couple of those cars over this direction. <laughs> yes. Right? Yes. Yes. Let, me, let me just tell you. I like a I 1969 Barracuda. <laughs> a 1977 450 SLC in case you got any of those laying around. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, Deborah, what say you about the disadvantages? Hmm. Well, the disadvantages also is a mental thing for mm -hmm. them because mm -hmm. they're unable to wrap their minds around being able to let go of anything that mm -hmm. they have that emotional attachment to. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really a hard thing to place because they, mm -hmm. they can't think, well, if I let go of that, I'm letting go of that person or I'm letting go mm -hmm. of whatever that situation mm -hmm. is, and I need mm -hmm. that to be mm -hmm. all right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Praise, do you have any com comment yeah. on the disadvantages of hoarding? Yeah, um, I'd say since hoarding um, also would require you buying stuff you don't need, you would also tend to poverty because you keep buying and then um, your money keeps going. You keep um, purchasing things that you don't need. You tend to poverty actually. Mm -hmm. Uh, you, just, mm -hmm. you just keep spending and keep spending and keep spending. At the end of the day, there's no value for what you're spending for. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for that insight. Mm -hmm. well, well, Pris, that, that, yeah, Pris, that is so good because I was thinking about that. I, I think if these people were to sell or do a garage sale and sell all their stuff in, in, their, in their homes, they, they, will get a lot of, they, will, they, will, they will get a lot of money. Looks like I, I, I have a full house. Uh, Nia, so if you guys can take it around, uh, I'll step away for a minute. Okay. It is almost time for us to do the round of the table anyway. So we've got a couple more, couple more minutes. This has been a wonderful conversation. Uh, when we thought about mm -hmm. it, when we thought about it last week as a follow-up to secondhand merchandise, I couldn't see how hoarding tied into secondhand merchandise at all. I was like, how did she come up with that? But um, I see how how it connects, and uh, this has been a, a very mm -hmm. good to talk about. And of course, next week is the last Sunday of the month, and we will be doing our health topic, which is first aid. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, please, I think, uh, Ambassador Lisa, what time do you have? I have two more minutes, is it? I have two minutes as well. Okay. So let's take a round of the table. I will start with the man, uh, Brother Ronald. Your final word or your last word on this discussion. Howdy. My final word on hoarding, I was surprised to learn that it was a psychological problem as well as a financial problem for a person. Mm -hmm. So I just hope that people who are poor will get help and seek help to get out of that bond and that mental anguish. That's my final word for the day. <clears throat> Thank you Thank so you. much. And I don't know if our lady in Nigeria is still on, please. If you are still awake She's and uh, ready to give your last word, go ahead and share your last word. What's your last take on the discussion? Okay, first of all, thank you, ma'am, for having me here. Um, okay, uh, first of all, the, the, the thing I, would, I want to say is um, I want to be the first is it partaker now of this topic and reduce how much I buy things and awesome. 
Awesome. <laughs> yes. We, 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 have a, we have a convert. We have a convert. <laughs> Live convert. Uh, well, I'll, I'll, I'll take that home. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. that, um, it'll be nice. It's, it'll be nice if, if we can actually just stick to what we want and just forget mm -hmm. about any other thing we really don't need. Yeah. We need, we need we need our space it's good for our health it's good for us to just have our space yeah. thank you so very much and please <laughs> next we will be talking about first aid uh if you're able to zoom in that would be great thank you so much i turn now to let me see here my list here i see apostle angela sister angela please your last word on the discussion my last word is hoarding is a very serious condition. Um, it, it, it can be as extreme to be um, life-threatening even. Uh, it destroys families, it destroys homes. And if we know anybody like that, um, we should pray for them and reach out to them and um, maybe help provide them with some resources um, for that. It's a very serious problem. Thank you so much. Harding is a very serious problem. And Sister Deborah? My last word is, as she was saying, the mental problem that they're going through needs to be recognized. And hopefully they have someone in their lives who can recognize it and help them get help. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Ambassador Lisa? Yes, as we've discussed, Hoarding, I thought of hoarding only as in the terms of physical uh, possession, material possessions, but I've come to learn that we have psychological, we have mental hoarding, uh, mm -hmm. there are just other areas that are tied to hoarding. So let's be transparent, let's be uh, vulnerable to a point where we can get help. Because God died, as we, as Reverend Pam can say, this is Resurrection Sunday, and we want to resurrect good things in people's lives. So Amen. Health Amen. and prosperity Amen. and hope in your lives. And in order to do that, we have got to be open and transparent with someone who can help us. So let's Amen. not be so afraid to share some of the things. Mm -hmm. As Pray said, she was going to be the first partaker of this conversation. I was the first mm -hmm and sharing my uh, gently collecting i'm always going to keep up <laughs> of my gently collecting things <laughs> and not to the point where i where my health and things are um in trouble but let's just find yet one person that you can really share with and 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 make sure that person that you're talking to and sharing with is able to help you overcome they're not going to be the one that run out and tell your business but they they, they really i mean they really genuinely care about you and want to see resurrection happen in every year of your life that's my last word on the subject thank you so much and ambassador no uh reverend pam uh, ambassador lisa i love you so much you know <laughs> <laughs> thank you all uh, ambassador gracie but i run mm. Sister Deborah and uh, Sister Praise from Nigeria, Annie Asong, and I apologize again for looking so tired, but I was not going to miss this show. My last word is let it go. You know, you came into this world butt naked. You're going you're gonna to go back with just a few clothes. <laughs> just, just, a few just, clothes. A, just a few clothes, maybe one pair, you know, and, and that's it. Mm -hmm. So all these things you are carrying is all very, I mean, you're not going to go back with it. So you don't own any of it. So just let it go. Mm -hmm. I don't care whether it's mental hoarding or gently collecting stuff or unconsciously <laughs> collecting stuff or <laughs> ha however you want to a, 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 a modify it, let it go. Yeah, so. Let it go, let it go, let it go. Yes. And it is on that that we will conclude this discussion. I had a quote which I was going to bring, but unfortunately deleted, it's up deleted, so I won't bring it to you, but whatever it is, Harding has its good and bad side, but the bad side seems to outweigh the good side. So let's go home and take a rest and enjoy the rest of our Easter. Thank you all for coming and please make it a date next Sunday. Bye for now. Bye, happy resurrection. Happy, happy resurrection, resurrection, everyone. Happy, happy resurrection. Happy Pat.